Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Bismillah ar-Rahman Inshallah, today we will uh, discuss a new, uh, not new to us, of course, uh, framework, which is Spark. Um, that doesn't mean that we uh, we stopped completely Hadoop, because we still have at least one session uh, uh, in which we will, inshallah, study uh, HBase, uh, which is related somehow to Hadoop, but not core Hadoop. Uh, the reason why I um, shifted uh, uh, Spark to be earlier that I want you to get an idea about it so that you can start thinking about it for the project. So, the uh, welcome to, uh, to Spark. Uh, the roadmap today will cover why we need Spark, uh, why we need something different other than Hadoop, at least, um, and what, is the, what are the core concepts beside, behind uh, Spark, what is the programming interface for Spark, and um, is what we studied today all uh, what we can do with Spark or not. So we'll start with why, why Spark. This is MapReduce. Um, I think you are familiar with it now. In MapReduce, we have two uh, abstractions, uh, two, uh, two functions. Uh, the abstraction has two, uh, two functions, mainly map and reduce, Yarim. Can you be with me, please? Um, and because we have just to provide um, mainly these two functions, it, it is simple. It simplified a lot of the analytics, but of course it has its own disadvantages. So um, it is, of course, restricted. We can only do these, this, whatever had, uh, MapReduce is allowing us to do, which is the map function shuffling and then reduce. Um, that doesn't generalize for all types of, of applications. Uh, and the main also disadvantage is that we have to start from storage and we end in storage. Okay, which is, of course, for two types at least of applications that we will discuss in China today is not optimal. Actually, it is, is, is extremely inefficient. Um, so, if, uh, as, as already you saw in, in, uh, um, in the previous lectures, when we talked about iterative algorithms like PageRank, for example, in every iteration, we have to read from HDFS, and we have to write the output in HDFS. And then for the next one, we need to read it again, and then uh, we write the output uh, to HDFS, and, and so on. So that's one type of applications for which Hadoop is extremely inefficient. Another type of application is the interactive uh, applications. If you if you want to do multiple queries on the data set, um, and you want to uh, you don't you don't want to do them in batch. You want to do the query and get the results, look at the results, and then do another query. Okay, so that's kind of uh, exploratory search. You cannot do that. Uh, of course, you can do it in Hadoop, but it's very inefficient. For every query, you have to load the data set. You have to issue the query, and and then get the result. So for every query, you have to load the data set. That's, of course, very inefficient. Um, of course, there are uh, disadvantages, like, not, not disadvantages, there are disadvantages for, for Hadoop-like replication that is needed for port tolerance, uh, but the disk I.O. is, is actually, uh, the disk, uh, the reading and writing to disk is, is, is killing for that type of applications. Um, so if I have an application, um, so that's that's the main pattern here okay, in, in these two types of application, applications. I have to um, reuse the data set that I am analyzing. In the first one, in the iterative uh, algorithm, there is some data that I am processing over and over again. And for the interactive search, there is a data, data set that I, I need to query again and again. So I don't need to, every time I need to, to, uh, to do an iteration or every time I need to query, I don't need to read from this. So that's the, the pattern that we need to, uh, to design a new framework for. The pattern is, is that we are reusing a working set of data. And that, uh, that of course, is clear in at least these two types of applications, iterative and interactive. 
Um, and the question will be how we can design some, some uh, framework that can, uh, can be efficient for these types of applications. And of course, can even give us uh, the ability to do broader classes of, of applications than the uh, programming model that, uh, that is restrictive that uh, MapReduce is, is providing us. So Spark here is, uh, is one of the solutions. So what are the goals of Spark? The main goal is to efficiently support applications with working sets. If I have um, a data set that I am reusing over time, then I want to support such application. And you will see that in that in the design of, of Spark that this is the, the major goal. Now, how can I do that? How can I support something like that? What is the, the, the main idea by which I can support such applications? What is the problem with MapReduce? The problem with that MapReduce is that every time I read uh, from this, right? If I avoided that by keeping the data in memory, then that's the, that's the solution. Very simple idea. Don't read from desk, read from memory. Reading from memory, memory means that you will have to keep the data sets in memory, the data sets that you will reuse in memory so that the processing will be very efficient. You don't need to reload the data from desk. So let, let them keep data let the applications keep the data in memory so that the processing would be that efficient. So here's the idea. You will first upload the data, of course, from this the first time. You have a question? Uh, Ali, you can talk, by the way. I, it's easier for me if, if I hear you. Ali, sir. Yes, do you have a question, Ali? Can I? Yes. But, doc but doctor... Hello. Yes, yes, I hear you. Uh, but doctor, if we are using the memory, the memory is uh, is limited. Yes, of That's course. That's why we 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 were forced to, to use the disk. In such a yes. way, the memory is always limited. Uh, of course, of course, there are, and we'll talk about that. There are applications, of course, or uh, size of data set that will not fit in memory, and we'll see how we will deal with that. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. So just stay tuned. So this is, here is the, the main idea. I will, of course, start with uh, uploading the data from, uh, from disk and do my first iteration, keep the data in memory, do my second iteration, keep the data in memory, and so on. So that's the first type. The second type of, of interactive search or interactive uh, anal analytics, I will load the data in memory once, then do the query on the same data set. Even if I need to modify the data set, I will modify it, keep it in memory, do all the work on the new data set if I want in memory. Okay. Of course, it's, it looks very simple. There are lots of details that, that inshallah we'll, we'll discuss, but that's the main idea. Okay. So, retain the attractive properties of MapReduce, which is simplicity plus for tolerance, locality, and scalability. And solve the problem of uh, uh, that, that we cannot do efficient analytics with uh, or for um, uh, interactive applications or iterative applications. Okay. So we need to see how we will do for tolerance. Uh, and that's very important because still we are uh, assuming that we are we are working on uh, commodity hardware, hardware that can fail. Okay, so we need to uh, to talk about for tolerance. We'll see how we we'll see how we can use also data locality. Sorry. Yes. The machine, if the machine fails, if the hardware fails, including memory, of course. Okay, so what is uh, Spark? So it, it was uh, uh, said that Spark is what is beyond MapReduce. Uh, it's the, the next thing to MapReduce. 
and it, it, it was at, at some point was really dominating the uh, the uh, the area, um, showing that it is much much faster than uh, MapReduce. Um, it is an open source engine Apache uh, project again uh, for large scale batch processing. So that core today we are talking about core Spark. There are components, other components that are built on top of the core core Spark, but and we'll inshallah talk about one of them next uh, next week, which is Spark, Spark Stream, uh, Streaming. Uh, but the core part of Spark is for batch processing, which is like MapReduce. Okay. Um, and uh, one thing that, uh, of course, it, it should be fast, and one thing that, that you will see today um, with, with the Spark is that we are no longer limited with these two uh, uh, golden functions, map and reduce. There are other things that we can do. Of course, with map reduce, we can do so many things. But Spark, you would see that it made it explicitly uh, uh, implemented for you some of the functions that, that you can use out of the box that, that is already uh, implemented uh, by Spark that will make your life much easier than in map. Um, and of, of course, the main idea is to improve efficiency uh, through in-memory computations and uh, the computation graphs that, that we will discuss in short. It also improves usability. So you will see, uh, I hope that we will have time today or at least uh, next week, you will see that uh, uh, there is an interactive shell by which we can uh, do some work with Spark. That's not, of course, in, in, uh, in MapReduce. And also the API, uh, there is an API in Java, and Scala, and Python, and also in R now. Uh, so you can use whatever uh, your favorite language is. Yes. You can. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can use any, any of these if you want. Uh, Scala, by the way, uh, if, you, if you will work with Spark, uh, Scala is recommended, but, but you are welcome to, to choose your own. Um, in, the, in the paper and in experiments, they show that it is 100% 100x faster than MapReduce just because of the in-memory uh, computations. Um, and um, in terms of the language, it is 2 to 10x less code, and, and I will show you actually uh, that very uh, nice example. If you look at that, this is the classical hello world in, uh, in MapReduce, right? This is the word count. This is the code that you need to write in Java for the word count. I think you, you are familiar with it now, right? Here is the code in Scala. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> okay, code that that is that's that uses Spark. Using Scala, so Scala is very expressive, very expressive, uh, and you will see that today, inshallah. Okay, just a quick example. Anyone has the experience in Spark? I used Spark before. Anyone has experience in Scala? Yeah, no. So you used Python with Spark? Uh, just a very brief history, um, uh, Spark was developed at UC Berkeley in 2009, open sourced in 2010, um, adopted by Apache as a, an Apache project uh, in 2014. In, in 2015, there were more than 400 developers working on Spark. Uh, and it's, uh, it is supported commercially by uh, a company now that was founded by the first author of the first paper of, of Spark. Which is called DataBricks. Okay, so let's start uh, talking about the details of, of Spark. So the key concept of Spark is to extend what we call a data flow model, a model that uh, that you uh, by which you specify what you will actually do with the data, using what we call resilient distributed data sets, RDDs. Okay, resilient distributed data, data sets. What are the RDDs? So RDDs are immutable collection of records. It's a data set. 
okay it's that that's the name of the data set that you will work on it is immutable so you cannot change which is similar to MapReduce right in MapReduce we don't we cannot modify the uh, data set that you are working on right we, we need to uh, create a new one if you want to make any changes same here okay so it is read only once created it never change resilient because it is fault tolerant if part of of the of the data set is uh, is gone because of failures in hardware you will see that there is a way to uh, to recover that uh, and of course it is uh, distributed because it's partitioned over a cluster okay so these are the three uh, three main main points about rtds immutable read only for tolerant and uh, distributed of course or partition by the way the two words are, are used in Spark terminology partitions and uh, uh, distribution. Okay? So the the, the 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 word partition means the part of the of the RDD that is at one node. Okay? Now there are two types of operations we can do on RDDs. So you can think of the RDD now is the the data set that we are working on. And you will see in, in, the, in the, the data flow model that uh, whenever we apply a transformation, which is the operation that we will do, we get a new RDD. Okay, so we'll, we will work with a sequence of, uh, of RDDs. Um, so as I said, there are two types of operations in Spark, transformations and actions. Okay, transformations, both operate, of course, on RDDs, but the output is different. Transformations operating on, on RDD to create a new RDD. And, and that's clear from the name, right? We transform the, the data into another form of the data. And it works on com complete RDDs. Work on, that's why it's called coarse grain manipulation sets. It manipulates the entire RDD. Of course, it is it will be defined on the records of the RDD, okay? But I cannot say that I want only to work on this partition of the RDD. I cannot do the transformation on part of the RDD and uh, not, not the, the other parts. And as you will see, RDDs will keep track of what we call the lineage graph. The lineage graph defines the, the sequence of transformations that led to the final RDD. So starting from a, a, a one RDD, or starting from the beginning of the, of the pipeline, how did we reach that RDD? The sequence of the transformations that we did to get to that RDD. This is called the lineage graph. And you would know why it is a graph, not just a pipeline, not just a linear pipeline. Uh, persistence is important uh, concept in, in Spark. Persi persistence here means that if, if I said that this RDD is persistent or if I want this RDD to be persistent, that means that it will be kept in memory. It will be persist in memory. It will be cached in memory. Type. Why, why do we need something like this? Yes. Yes, sure. Yes, um, you will start by, by a data set, which is an one RDD, and then you can transform it to another RDD. And then you transform it again to, another, to a third RDD. Yes, of course, based on the transformations that you would do. We will see examples. Okay? We will see examples. But I want to make sure that you got this. Why do we need to, uh, why do you need this persistence uh, concept? Yes, so we need to keep it in memory. Okay? And that means that also, by definition, that means that some RDDs might not be persistent. 
Okay? And that's because I might not reuse it. I just need it for doing one um, transformation, and then halas, I got what I need. I will persist what I need that I will reuse. Okay? So that's, that's flexibility, and that's very important to understand in Spark. Okay, now to the operations in general, we have, as I said, two types of RDB operations, transformations and actions. Transformations, like filter, map, and union, we'll discuss them, inshallah, are operations that create a new RDD by manipulation on another RDD. So we start from an RDD and uh, end with an RDD, okay, with a new RDD. That's a transformation. Or, by the way, we can also load the data from, from disk. That's, that's also a transformation. That's the initial, that's a special case. Okay. The, type, the other type of operations that we can do on RDDs are called actions. Actions trigger a specific uh, computation to return result to the driver program. So it will not create an RDD. It will uh, return some results. This result can be a number, can be a set of records from, from your, your data set, but it will not create a new RDD. Okay, so that you can think of it as the final output. You want to get some output, not, not exactly the eventual final, but that's an output that you as a, a, a user will get. Okay, it's either returning back a value or a, a, a result to the driver, to the driver program or write the output to uh, to storage okay so that's that's the difference between transformation and action transformations create new rdds actions don't create they don't create uh, new rdds they return the results to uh, to the user or to the driver program that that will run all of these things or of course write save the data to disk so either returning results or saving to this case. Yes, yes, you can use them. I think you can. I think you can. The API allows you to, uh, to, to write your own, uh, but the, there are plenty of, of them that, that you should think very seriously before uh, creating new ones. Okay, now, very important concept, which is the lazy evaluation. Transformations are evaluated lazily. What does that mean? We will discuss it in detail, but quickly the, the concept. When we specify the transformations that we want to do, we want to go from this RDD to that RDD, we do some transformation. We will specify it in the code, and Spark will keep it in mind. But it, it will not do it, actually, until you apply an action. Because that action requires Spark to return something to the user, to the, to the programmer, to the driver program. And at that point, Spark will go back and do all the transformations that will lead to that action. Okay, that's why we call it lazy evaluation. So as you add more transformations, nothing will be done physically. And actually, it doesn't need to be done because nothing will return to you. Okay? Once you, you ask for something to get, everything will be done. Okay? It will take the same time. The problem here is that, I mean, total processing time will be the same. The, the problem here is that um, this optimization is done because you don't need to exhaust your memory unless the time comes to do it. If you, if uh, the other design option was to, whenever you uh, apply transformation, you, you, uh, you put it, you, 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 you do it, and you put all the, these RDDs in, in memory. So that, that, uh, that was the, the issue. Okay. Now once action is triggered on an RDD, Spark will examine the lineage graph, the pipeline of transformations 
that that uh, that you already described and execute all of them so that you can uh, you can get the result that you want from the action so keep that in mind actions are the only operations that will trigger actual computations on rtds okay now let's look at a quick uh, example in this example we have a log file and that log file has um, uh, some error messages okay so we want to uh, to uh, filter these error messages so that we can do some uh, analysis on them okay so um, we'll assume that we have a cluster now as in MapReduce there is a, a, a master node that or the submitting submission node that you submit from submit the job from okay here is, it is called the driver so you will submit your code or you run your code your own code on the driver node and uh, the driver node then will uh, will contact the workers now let's say that the log file is in, in hdfs by the way spark works on on hadoop clusters okay um, so it knows what hdfs is and it can also work on your local uh, desk if you want so there are other things that are supported but one of them is uh, is hdfs so you load the uh, your data set which is in, in one file assuming here one big file using that line so you say uh, spark or the uh, what we call it uh, the spark context um, which is a uh, available already when you uh, when you get into the uh, the spark shell that inshallah we will demo and you call text file text file here means load this uh, this file into memory okay once you write this in the in the shell what will happen the file will be uploaded right no this is a transformation we didn't do any action yet okay so nothing will happen it's just that it, it, the spark will indicate that there is a transformation that can be done but it will not do it okay so nothing will be loaded so that's the base rdd but we will not upload it yet okay so nothing happened here in the cluster so far now we want to filter when when you load when you load the text file it will be loaded in line every record will be aligned exactly like uh, like hadoop so what you want to do is to get only the error messages from that uh, from that uh, uh, data set or rdd this is, by the way, Scala code. So um, the lines RDD, you will apply another transformation called filter. Okay. And uh, with Scala, you can use this, uh, this underscore to indicate a placeholder. So here, the filter function, uh, the filter transformation, sorry, is a, is a Spark transformation that takes a function takes a function that that is up, will be applied on every record in the RDD and that function returns the boolean value if it's true then this record will be in the resulting RDD okay so that's why we, when we say starts with error that means that every input every record which is the, just a line a string if it starts with the word error I want it to to be in the uh, in the new RDD. Okay, is that clear? So that's a transformation. What will happen in the cluster? Nothing, because we didn't yet apply any action. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, called transformed RDD because we applied the transformation on the first one. Now I want to. Um, um, I think I, that's the, the, the field number two in this line. So that line has two fields. The, the second field, I think, is the time that, uh, in which the error uh, appears. So I want only to get that time. Okay. So I will apply another transformation called map. So map here takes one record from the RDD 
actually map, map is a transformation again like filter that takes a function. Okay? So filter is a transformation that takes a function. This function takes one record and returns a Boolean value. And if if the record if the uh, if the value is true, then that record will will be kept in the resulting RDD. The map function does a computation, so it takes the record and produces a value out of that record. Okay, so the value here will be the second uh, field in that line. Okay, is that code clear? I mean, the, the meaning of it. Okay. Now, we have a third RDD now. So we started with lines RDD, then errors, then messages. Up to here, nothing will be done in terms of computations on the cluster. Now, we will say, we will explicitly made, makes, uh, we, we will explicitly make messages to persist. Okay, that means that we need messages. Once it is in memory, we want to keep it in memory. Okay, again, that's, that uh, doesn't do anything yet because it's not an action. Now, I want to only get the error messages that has some words, some specific word. So I will check now, I will uh, um, apply the filter transformation on the cached messages that has the errors. Remember that we get the all the errors and we get, uh, uh, I think, the type of the error or something that's the second field. Now I want to get all the errors that have this word. Okay? So if, if the message has, if the error message has the, this word, then this will be in the output. Okay? In the output, in the resulting RDD. Now, if you uh, look at this, this is, this is a transformation, a filter transformation, but then it is uh, 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 the, the, the subsequent uh, uh, operation, which is called count, is an action, actually. Count returns the number of records to the driver program. Okay, so that's an action. So filter is a transformation and count is an action. Now, how many RDDs we should have gotten so far? So we have lines, we have errors, we have messages, which is the cached messages, so we didn't, uh, it's, it's just the same RDD. So we have three RDDs up to this point, and then the fourth one, which is after filtering, so that's the fourth, and then uh, we apply count on that fourth one. So what happens now? Because that's an action, things will start to uh, to be applied on the on the cluster. So from the beginning, now Spark knows their lineage, knows what is the sequence of the transformations that I need to apply count on. Okay, so it will start to actually apply all of these. It will load the data from uh, from HDFS, so from the blocks in in the in the machines here. Then um, uh, then uh, assign the the workers on these on these machines. That's data locality, like like in MapReduce, the, the node that has the data will process the data and we'll start to filter these, uh, these blocks and get back the, and, and of course makes the, the, this data uh, persistent, persistent in, in memory, and then do the uh, filtering and return back the results. Okay, so all of these transformations will be done in sequence, but only when we call the count uh, action. Okay? Here is another, we want now to, um, to get the messages that has another word. Okay, now think with me, what should happen now? The cache, the, the cache messages are cached already in memory, so we don't need to recompute it. We'll just apply filter on it. Okay, 
But the, 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 the RDD that is resulted from this is gone. It's not resistant. Okay? So what happens is that now that these cached messages are already cached, not because it's called cached, but because we made it resistant. So we don't need to go to the, uh, the beginning, we just go to, the, uh, to this RDD and apply filter and then return count back. Okay, so new tasks would be, uh, would be assigned. Um, the data is, in, in the, in, is, uh, is cached already, so the results would be back. Okay, so, sorry? Second line, what's the second line? This one? Ah, okay. Uh, it says, uh, it's, it's, it's like exactly this one, but with a different word here. And so on. So whenever you, um, you apply an action, Spark goes back, look at the lineage, and of course start from whatever is persistent. If not, then it will go back and and do the computations. Okay? Is that clear?